the key on there in case I in case somebody watches it again. Unfortunately, the explanations aren't there. Okay, so number question two, factor fully. Um, and so you you kind of you kind of see that there are only two uh, terms, and that you have a negative there. So you either flip them, or you take out that negative. So that'd be negative 144 a squared minus 121 b squared. And that in turn gives you 12a plus 11, right? This is, you have a calculator now, remember, for your test. So if you need to double check, you can do that. So it's 12a, so square root of the first term plus square root of the second times 12a minus 11b. A lot of you missed that on the test that they have to have opposite signs and you forgot to take out the negative, right? You should never have a negative there and a positive there inside factoring. It just doesn't work, okay? So that's that. Question three. Let me just uh, hold it one more time. And three factor fully, we're going to take out the negative, right? And that will leave me with 15 uh, m squared plus 14 mn minus 8 n squared. So it's a multivariable situation. Doesn't change the way we approach it, right? There's no way we can take out a GCF. Um, so we need to just refer to our matrix. So it's 3, 5. And notice that this is negative. So if you go 2, 4, one of them has to have a negative, right? One of them has to. So then you try this is, this is negative 12 and 10. Sorry, that gives you negative 2, doesn't work. Even if you were to flip the sign, you would just get positive 2. So you got to try a different method. I'm going to bring the 4 up, the 2 down. I'm going to already put the negative here. I have a pretty strong feeling that this is what it's going to be. You get 20. If you add it up, you get plus 14. And this is what I want, right? You want the sign that you have after taking out the negative, right? Don't go back to the original. You're looking at this, right? And so you got the 14. So uh, this, so you're using these two here, folks. Some of you are using this. It's like 3m plus 2n. And then it's 5m minus 4n. That's factored fully. Okay. I'm actually um, quite happy with how factoring, how you're factoring. You're you're actually overall. There are some hiccups that you might need to address, um, but it's you're you're pretty much all on the right track. So I don't know what it is. Uh, I don't know if you're all getting tutors or something. And your tutors get deserves a pat on the back, or you're just doing your homework. Uh, whatever it is, it's working. Okay. Four uh, A. These ones, uh, I'm gonna use this almost as a review slash teaching moment. Okay. So watch how I'm gonna approach these. You want them to be a PST. Okay. And there's a few things. I'm going to show you a method that is not very orthodox, but it's, it works. How did we get the middle? We, at some point, multiplied it by 2, right? So go ahead and divide that by 2, you get 15. right? Because you need to undo what happened to get here. And you know that this, right? To get the middle number, you multiply it by the, by the square root of this. So find the square root of 25. That gives you 5. Right? And if you divide these two, like whatever you get by dividing this in half, and then you divide the square root of this, that gives you 3. All right? Because remember, to get to here, you went 2 times the square root of the first times the square root of the first term. So 
think about it. If you go 2 times 5, that's 10. Times 3, that's 30, right? So to, to plug this back in here, you just go 3 squared. You square it. You square that, and then you plug it in here. That gives you 9. So the factored form of that would be uh, 3x minus 5 squared, right, if you wanted to. So you basically found out the square root of the last term here, and this is the square root of the first term. And then we squared to get back in there. See this page number here? If you want more practice, that this page number in your textbook gets you there if you want to have a few more goals at it, right, to see if you're understanding it. Because I, I'm, I spent most of my time figuring out the middle because that was at first was more important to me. But it's you need to know how to do either front or back. Okay, so here's the middle again. Divide that by 2. That's 40. Okay, you take the square root of the first one, which is 5. Right, and so this is, you take this 5 and divide it by whatever you got in the middle, and that's 8. And then to get it back, you just go 8 squared, that's 64. It's as easy as that. Okay. I don't know why I left so much room there, but last one here. I don't know. Oh, this, you probably didn't see this, right? I didn't. Uh, okay, my bad. I, I wanted this to be some somewhat of a mini lesson, so I just uh, needed 15 minutes to go talk to someone. Okay, so here we know this is just square root of 81m squared. That's 9m. Square root of 4 is just 2. This is a single variable, right? So to get the middle, you go 2 times 9m times this last one, right? So that's 4 times 9, that's 36m. And so that's what goes in here, 36. The m is already there. So just plug it in there. 2 times square root of first, square root of last, right? That's how you get the middle. And that's it. And then we'll keep going with some more uh, questions here. Um, I, I think I may have assigned this in the past. Just write this down. The formula to approximate the surface area of a human body. So if you write the, the skin that wraps around your body, uh, n square meters is, and so the formula is given, okay? This is the formula that you would use. Um, and recall that now you have a calculator, so you can just plug things in. So the question is, what is the surface area of a person weighing 75 kilograms? And if you want more of these to practice, uh, page 228, 17, 18, and 21, those questions help you uh, review that. And I will, I will ask a question like this um, either on the test for this unit or on the quiz for this unit. Okay. It's not very complicated to do. You just have to remember bed mass. And um, the quiz for this unit is tomorrow, okay? So tomorrow we'll do a quiz and I will mark it. Uh, I will probably, I'll try to get it back to you sometime during spring break. Um, probably towards the end of spring break because we do, we do have a life outside of school, in case you're wondering.
So you want to test out your calculator skills on this one. So the surface area is 0 0.096 times m. And in this case, m, that could be anything. It could have a decimal, right? In this case, it's exactly 75 kilograms. And um, we have that to the power of 0 0.7, which is also 7, 7 over 10. But you don't need to convert that to a fraction. Um, you've got to be careful here. You got to do this first, okay? That needs to happen first. So go 75 to the power of, I don't know, look at the screen here. If, if you have a different calculator, that's fine. But I use the hat button, right? That hat button or X to the Y or Y to the X, whatever button you have on your calculator and just type in 0.7, right? And you should get this. And we wanna have at least four decimals. I prefer all, it's not that much work, right? So you go 0 0.096, you have to show this step, okay? 20.537278812, right? So you leave this on your screen, and then you just go multiply 0 0.096. You, mul you multiply this now by what's in front of it, and it's 1.97. And what is it in? It says that it will determine the, the surface area in square meters. So that's what you need to, uh, you've got to make sure you include units. And then note, this is the common mistake that I see. When I give students something like this, uh, let's say they go two times 10 squared. They will say, oh, two times 10 is 20, 20 squared, that's 400. This is wrong, okay? This is wrong, you, you cannot multiply like this has an exponent attached to it, you gotta do that first. The correct way is y is equal to two times 100, because 10 squared is 100, and that's 200. This is correct, okay? This is wrong. So the exponent wins, uh, bed mass, right? I don't know if you remember bed mass brackets exponents Brackets, there's nothing inside the brackets, but then you apply the exponent to it, and then you multiply. And if you want to try more, there are three word problems like this, 17, 18, 21, on page 228. 17, 18, 21, questions, 17, 18, and 21 on 228. And backside here, expand and simplify type of question involving a diagram like that. So try your best to copy that down, please.
Okay. So let's solve this, shall we? If you want the area of the shaded region, right? Area of shaded, you would have to go area of large minus area of small. You take away that small area from the big one and then you're left with what's shaded, right? So area of shaded, so this is just a little different, right? Area of the large shape would be 3x minus 1 times 2x plus 3 minus the area of the small is x minus 2 times x minus 2, right? Which is x minus 2 squared, really. It's a square that you're removing, right? So I want you to expand and simplify this, okay? So we're going to tackle the first one. Start all the way on the left because you're going to need room, right? So this is 6x squared, 9x squared, or 9x, sorry, minus 2x minus 3. That's what you get out of this. Subtract. I will put this in brackets just to show that this is the expression I get from these two multiplying. Minus, okay, x squared minus 2x minus 2x again plus 4. Clean it up before you do anything. 6x squared, this gives you plus 7x minus 3 minus this minus is going to apply everything in there, but we're first going to clean it up as well. x squared minus 4x plus 4. It's easier if you clean this up into just a trinomial, right? And then you get 6x squared plus 7x minus 3 minus x squared plus 4x. Kudos, a lot of you got this right on the, uh, on the test, right? So you have to distribute this along the whole thing. And last but not least, we combine our x squares. That gives you 5x squares. We have the x's here. 7 and 4 is 11x. And then we have our, I'm going to use a triangle, right? Negative 7 at the end. So that would be the fully solved, simplified expression for the area of the shaded this would give you the shaded area, right? So I will just add this area of shaded one more time because that's what you're doing right now. It's not just an expression, it's actually an equation, okay? So this is it. So, so, so just putting a little twist to it. When you're factoring, you're actually finding the side lengths of a rectangle. And if, it's, if they're both the same, then it happens to be a square. And I think I'm going to leave it at that. I have volume yet, but I, I think I'm going to leave it at, at this for, for this warm-up. Can you now go to page 12 in, those, in that booklet? Um, remember, I, I asked you to leave room for a rectangular pyramid. I will just, just use this uh, page 12 in your booklet to go over that. Okay, and I'm going to start, um, just going to label it later as rectangular pyramids as well. So I hope this helps as a bit of a review so you know uh, it, it's, it's fresh, right, in your, in your mind. So go to page 12, and this is the rectangular pyramid, right? If you want to go in your notes where you left that space, right, just say go see page 12 and booklet, right? Um, but this is essentially it. Okay, so I'm going to get, use some space here to give you the formulas, and then I will, we will actually calculate the surface area for this particular rectangular. How do you know it's rectangular? Because the base has different 
lengths, right? It's, a, it, it's 10 by 8, so you know it's not a square. Okay. All right. So um, one thing that I need you to understand is I'm going to use different colors. It has two different slant slant heights, right? So if you want to label this one in red, right, mark that one red. And this one in blue, right? Right, so one, right? Because the bases have different dimensions, so will the slant heights. So we call, I call this in my formula that I'm about to give you, this one here is called slant one. And this blue one here is called slant two. Okay, so there are two different slant heights. We call this length, width, and this 16 here, right, along down the middle, that's height. Okay, so length, width, and height is there. So there's a lot of moving parts on this one. Okay, so to, to give you the formula for the surface area of a rectangular cone, uh, pyramid, sorry, surface area of rectangular pyramid, okay? You would have to find the, the area of base, so that'd be length times width plus two times the area of, like, this front face and the back have the same dimension, so that'd be length times S1 divided by 2 plus 2 times the width times slant 2 divided by 2. That is, in a, in a sense, right, the, these would be two triangles here and two triangles as well. And this is the base. A base plus two triangles plus the other two triangles. Because they're not all the same all around. So you need to break it down like this. But watch, it gets it gets even more simplified. This two and that two can cancel out. I just want to show you how I will get the simplified formula that I'm about to give you. So surface area, you got to memorize this one. Length times width plus length times slant one plus width times slant two. The LSA would be not including the length times width, it would just be length times S1. plus width times S2, right? Because you're not including that. So you've got the surface area and the lateral surface area there. So that those are the formulas that uh, you have to be comfortable with. So here is, this is, this should be, whatever I'm giving you here is going to be happening before you find a surface area if they do not give you the slants, okay? So if they do not give you the slant heights, they just give you length, width, and height, you have to find the slant heights. So this is how you, 
how you find that slant one is going to be the square root of because you're using Pythagorean theorem and this is where it's a little counterintuitive it's going to be half the width width divided by 2 squared plus the height squared and I know some of you like to use a B and C so this would be a for you okay? and this would be C1 for you if you want like to use C for the hypotenuse of a triangle this would be C1 and this would be a squared okay slant 2 I promise you that on a test I will not uh, require this of you to figure out the slant heights they will be provided I can promise you that but if there's ever a question where you're asked to find what they are then here you have the formulas right so to find the second slant it's actually taking the length dividing it in half and squaring it because that will give you the this side here plus the height squared and that's how you find the slants which then uh, in that case you will be able to plug them in here and solve so in a sense if it's given to you, you just plug them in here and just use this formula if it's not you got to backtrack and here's where I'm going to caution you for this to work you need to make sure this is the length and that's the width and that the length and S1 are on the same side, same with the width and S2, like you make sure they match. This could be upside down, it doesn't matter, just gotta make sure they, they match, right? They're on the same face, okay? So now we will do some calculations here. Okay, so they're asking us to find calculated surface area of this pyramid. And we'll say that this is our length, this is our width, because that's what I did on my on my diagram here, and this is the height. Oops, you can't see that, sorry. Up here, okay, width is eight, according to my diagram, length is 10, and the height is 16. And they give you the heights, they do not give you the slant. Slant, not given. So this is the hardest example you're going to see, okay, by far. Uh, when it comes to rectangular pyramids. If it's a square-based pyramid, you're laughing. There's only one slant height. But if it's a rectangular, which some of the, word pro some of the problems in the textbook will start to have, and some of the reviews I'll give you, uh, then you need to use this. So slant's not given. So I'm going to figure out slant one. Slant one is going to be my width in half. So that's eight over two squared plus sixteen squared, and that is really eight divided by two is four, right? Four squared plus sixteen squared. So S1 is equal to 16 plus 16 squared. That's 271, uh, 272. Okay. And then the second slant, slant two. We're gonna take our length, which is 10 divided by two and you can do you can go straight to five I just want you to see in your notes how I got that right that'd be five squared plus 16 squared so that's 25 plus 16 squared that's 281 so slant two slant one I have them now okay and they're asking for the surface area so I'm going to
cut this here. Surface area, being organized is gonna be important, right? If you wanna box things in as you're working on it, uh, start on the left most, right? And then work down and then over and down, over and down, right? Surface area here is eight. I'm using this formula right here. Length, which is 10, sorry, let's be consistent. Length times width plus length, which for me is 10 times slant one, which is root of 272 plus width times uh, slant two, which is 281. And this is 80 plus 10 root to 72 plus eight root of 281. If you have a decent calculator, you can do this in one shot. That's 379.03 rounded square feet, right? Because it's surface area. If this had been lateral surface area, it would, you would not be including the 80. You'd just be including these here. So I guess it's important for you to label which one is, like, technically, if the diagram wouldn't have been there, I would have probably gone length, width, and height, okay? And that's fine. You just have to be consistent. Because I, I labeled everything based on the diagram, I needed to make sure here I didn't mix them up. All right, that's it for square, uh, rectangular pyramids, okay? I just wanted to have that. And they will show up, so I don't have to give you a, a page numbers or anything like that. All right, so let me just pause this here.